Hello Rust developers and welcome to another Gazebo in 5 minutes video provided by The Construct, a channel about Rust. I am Marco Arruda and today we are going to learn how to create a Gazebo model using SDF format. But before anything else, remember to visit the Robotic Net Academy, our online academy where we are going to find practical online Rust courses using simulated robots. No installation is required and you will find a link to the academy on the video description. So now let's start with the example. So in order to do that, I'm going to use RustDS as usual. If you don't have an account yet, you can create one for free and start using it for free, just following the link in the description of the video. So let's open the, the rows I created on the previous video, which was number three. And let's wait a few seconds until the environment's ready. There it is. So this time we're gonna use only the IDE. Let me put it bigger. And basically what I have to do is we want to create a model. So we have to define a package to contain this model. In this case, I'm gonna use the same package, which was my simulations. We have to create this package here, models, and another model. For each model, we're gonna create a new folder so let's call it my first model and for each model you have to define at least two files okay and we, you can check some examples in the gazebo models repository for example we have ground plane and the sun model so let's check ground plane we have a config and a sdf file okay so let's define model.config Let's open it and model.sdf. And basically, in the config file, it's just a description to others about your model. Okay. In this case, you have to define here the name, for example, my first model. And actually, I'm going to copy what I have already created here and paste. So basically, you have to put your name here, the name of the maintainer and also the email, and then a description about your model for those who are going to use it. So this is an XML file, let's put it bigger. And now for SDF, we are going to have something that's very look like to URDF, because we have used a URDF model in the previous video to spawn a robot, but there are some differences between SDF and URDF. Basically, you can describe robots, models or even entire environments of robotic simulations using SDF. Okay? And URDF is restricted only for creating a single robot. Okay? But both of them works in Gazebo. So in the model SDF file, this is what we have here. I'm going to paste what I have already created and explain line by line. So this is an XML file. We are defining uh, an SDF tag, which contains everything about the model, okay? And then we have a model tag. Uh, finally, we are defining, this is a not static model, so we have to put the name of the model here, my first model, and it's not static, we are defining a single link for this model, okay? And then we have collision and visual parts. So for the collision, we have to define its geometry. In this case, it's just a, bo uh, a box for sake of simplicity. And we are defining here the size of the box and then the friction of the surface of this object. This is not mandatory, but it's, I'm just illustrating some property that you can use for your model, okay? And finally, the visual part, it's also looking like to the collision, but it's used for another purpose, okay? The collision is used to do the maths of the dynamics of the, the environment when a robot and a model, for example, when they collide, it's used for this kind of situation. And the visual part is only what you are seeing of the simulation, okay? So in this case, we are using the same geometry. It's, again, the same box with the same size. And we have to define the material, which is basically... Uh, the color, or uh, it can, could be also the texture of the object. 
In this case, we are using the same color that we have for the ground plane, as you can see here, uh, which is just a gray color generated by gazebo. Okay. So let's try to use it after creating our model, the config and the SDF file. We have to include it not in the launch file because the launch file is pointing. We are overriding the word parameter using this argument here. And we are launching this same two world file creating created inside of our package, my simulation. So let's check the word file. Instead of using these models that we have used in the previous video, we are going to remove one of them. And we're going to include the one that we have just created. Let's put it in a higher position. And the name of the model is my first model. Okay. So go to the simulations tab, select launch file, and my simulation is my word. This is the name of the launch file, not the word file. Okay. Let's wait a few seconds until the simulation is ready. Let's put it bigger. And where is the model? There it is. So we have created a very big box. Actually, it looks more like a, a wall than a box, but it's okay. Let's get started. Remember that we have created a non-static model. Okay, we have it defined it here, static false. And also in the word file, we can override this this property. But so let's play the simulation. And we have a static model, okay, because we have overwritten it here. So let's just remove it and it should be used this property as false here. Let's relaunch it and see what we have. As usual, you can check the logs if you have done something wrong or if it's not working as expected. Okay. But in this case, everything is is going as expected. It's going fine. So let's minimize the logs. And there it is. We have again our wall box. And let's play. Now it's not static. So at the moment we play it, the box falls down. Okay. So that's all for today. Uh, did you like the video? If you did, please give us a thumbs up and remember to subscribe to our channel and press the bell to receive a notification about a new video or us every day. Either you like it or not, please share your thoughts and questions in the comments area. See you!